Welcome to the People, Passion, and Purpose podcast, where you will hear from creative small business owners in the trenches every single day, talking story, talking lessons, talking failures, talking truth. I'm your host, Nina L. Kovner. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome back to the podcast, everyone. Today we have the awesome Kristen Packett, salon owner, stylist, bridal specialist, leader, and owner of La Pompane Salon. Welcome, Kristen. Hi, thanks. I am so happy you're here, especially because we've already recorded one podcast and then we decided to re-record the podcast and we have had so many scheduling situations. And so this is kind of like a really exciting moment for me because I finally get to ask you some of the questions that after we recorded the last podcast, I realized I didn't ask you and I thought would be so valuable for our audience. So for context, let's talk about uh, how long have you been a salon owner and why did you choose to become one? Well, I, um, first of all, have become, have a, been a salon owner for 28 years, which wow. in two weeks, officially 28 years. Happy um, 28. <laughs> thank you. I, never intended to be a salon owner. I really liked just being an artist and letting somebody else do all the business work. Um, and I had a friend who was a bridal hair or bridal gown designer here in Pittsburgh. And she started to have me come to her bridal shop and design the hairstyles around her headpiece and her gowns. And uh, a little storefront became open next to her bridal shop, and it was a really reasonable rent. And she encouraged me to open a little place. And it was just, it seemed right. And I did it, and I didn't intend to have a team. I just wanted to go there and do my own thing. Yeah. And the rent was really reasonable, and it was a very small investment. And then, you know, birds of a feather. I started to attract people that liked the same thing as me, and we became Pittsburgh's first day spa. <laughs> and that was 1992 when the word day spa was actually used. Right, right. 1992. So, uh, again, for more context, you and I are the same age. We come from the same generation, and we did not grow up with the Internet. We did not grow up with social media. We, yeah. we you know, we had dial-up phones or whatever, and business cards, you know, right. right? I, I tell everybody that I'm like, listen, I, when I see bathroom selfies, I'm like, I did bathroom <laughs> makeovers in nightclubs, <laughs> literally with all the products that were on the nightclub bathroom, yes, yeah. you know, and you'd give them a dollar to use their hairspray. I love it. I love yes. it. I love it. I so business cards in the bathroom. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Right. So it was, yep. a very, it was a, it was a very different time, but it was also a very similar time in that the business is word of mouth regardless. Right. Correct. Yes. Correct. And that's how you like, you just said it, you literally just said, I opened a little space, there was an opportunity and then people start talking. Right. And you, Silas came to you, clients came to you. And, and yep. so I really wanted to, to spend this session, this podcast, um, talking about you and your discovery of social media. So when did you first kind of as a business even know that social media was even a thing? Like, can you tell us a little bit about like your first kind of, huh, what is this? And what is this? Sure. Uh, of course, some of the younger kids in the salon, it was 2008, were starting to use fate or my space. And I thought that was horrible. And <laughs> how, could that? how could you put yourself out there? And, and then they started using Facebook. And then I thought that was, and they were like, you should have a Facebook page for the business. I said, are you crazy? I want nothing to do with the internet. Nothing. It's horrible. It's just a scary thing. 
And um, and then I got a personal Facebook because I felt the peer pressure. And um, then I realized, oh, I really only have to put what I really want on here. And it's not so scary. And then I opened a business Facebook. And then when Instagram came around, I guess it was I jumped on about 2012. And I thought to myself, well, I really like this artistically better because it's mm. less like, here's what I know and more what I do. Here's what I do. Uh huh. Yeah. So that's, that's how long that happened. I love that. And encouraged by my younger teammates. Go, go millennials. Right. Another right. shout out to millennials. We usually get one, at least one shout out to millennials on most of these podcasts because we love you. Um, okay. So <laughs> So when did you begin to see actual um, business impacts from the online space? Um, I would say I actually know exactly. So I was, you know, I, we were just posting photos of our work and, and I really wasn't thinking in terms of like, I just thought, well, our clients will, see it and get ideas from what we're doing or whatever. And I went to New York to take a three day class with Vivian McKinder and we were at her place and I posted the work I was doing in her workshop. And I had a photographer contact me and say, are you available to come do a photo shoot for me in Pittsburgh? Wow. And that's, and that's when I knew I said, this is powerful. This is get you a job. This you know? can get you a job. And it actually right. got you a job. And it did. And do you know, now I am partners with that photographer and we have a studio together. Oh my gosh. Yes. What yes. an incredible, incredible yes. story. And so now I'm, you know, I, I work with this photographer once or twice a week and I have beautiful content for my social media and I still operate Facebook because I'm talking to a completely different generation on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Um, but I get to feed my soul with doing, you know, that kind of work along with being behind the chair. And I also have an outlet for my younger staff who thinks what else can they do besides work behind the chair? We have a photography studio where we do creative stuff and fam. I mean, kind of a mix of everything, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it would have never happened without social media ever. I, love I would have I never. Love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. Okay. So let's fast forward to what I got super, super excited about last month. And that was how you tapped into uh, Facebook and Instagram around your holiday promotions and yes. gift card sales and con weekly contests and all that stuff. So, so let's take a, a few steps back and, and when did you begin planning or thinking about your, when do you normally begin planning your holiday, your holiday stuff? When do I normally? <laughs> okay. I already know. I think I already know the answer to this question. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's talk about it. <laughs> years ago, <laughs> not even years ago, I'm going to say six months ago, <laughs> um, I would, you know, I, I can't say that because I have amazing managers. You and they, do. Um, you, and you they, have a business of 28 years. So, yeah. Let's, so I have, we, we would, you know, I would say we'd start planning uh, Oct in October. We'd start planning for holiday. Right. And. Uh, you know, we'd have our gift certificate sales. And of course, I'd post them on social media and Facebook and I mean, Facebook and Instagram, blah, blah, blah. But and I'm, I'm not saying this just because you're doing, you know, this podcast, I really learned so much about uh, using my Instagram to drive business into the salon. I really learned so much. And so one of the things, you know, everybody's crying because they're not getting engagement on Instagram. And, and I'm like, wait a minute, I really don't need to talk to the planet. I just need to talk to Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. And so I changed my, my way I was using social media to just, Hey, talk to the people of Pittsburgh who wants to, you know, answer this question and register for a free manicure. Well, nobody cares if they live in 
Italy if they're going to get a free manicure. So, of course, they're not going to answer the question. But that's how I started to build my engagement for my stories. And then I noticed a chance to talk about my gift certificates when my engagement was up. And I mean, that's just... I would say. And and the other thing was your uh, <laughs> encouraging, encouraging me to allow online booking, because what that then did was it made me dive into my uh, software where I found all these ways to communicate with my clients that I did not really tap into before. And the emails started. Literally, I've never sent we have 16,000 customers in our base. I've never sent one email until I joined a school and (laughs) tried this. I'm not kidding. It's not, I'm not even kidding you. Don't make me tear up when we're talking about gift certificates, but thank you. Of course, I'm thrilled that you're here. That's not, as you said, that's not why we're sharing this information. Right. right, This is not a promotion of any kind, but I'm so fucking proud of you. And I got so excited when, you know, it's one thing to open a business like yesterday and have like this explosive growth. It's different when you've been in business for 28 years and you tap into something that's available to you and you see such a significant shift. That's the storyline here. And that's the thing that got me so excited and of course proud, but excited and, and wanting to share, especially for those out there that are still not seeing the value and still unsure about, well, I just don't like, you know, email's dead or, you know, who buys gift right. certificates anymore or I, my engagement's in the toilet. I don't know who I'm talking to. All those things that you just said. Um, so your gifts, you had record gift certificate sales. Record. Like 150% more. No, 200% more. Okay. And, and that was driven through on the email. So your email marketing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And all I did was I did a small business Saturday sale, which was a big sale. It was 20% off gift certificates over a hundred dollars or more. So that was a big, big incentive, big, but then I did buy a hundred dollar gift certificate, get a $20 extra for cyber Monday. Mm. And it was insane. And I literally, we've run these in the past. We just didn't send out an email notification. <laughs> so let's talk about that. So you <laughs> obviously, you have two, so two locations. Correct. You have a, a big operation. Okay. So again, okay. context, always a big operation, two locations, 60 employees. 60 employees. You have a lot of history, all of those things. You've obviously always had some sort of software. I mean, since it's been invented, of course, when you and I started, there was no internet. So there certainly was no software, but, but you, 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 your operation is run professionally and, and organized and all those things, inventory, payment processing. But as you shared, which is just such a such an incredible, incredible reminder for all of us, no matter really what business we're in, the technology is available when and if we choose to use it. Correct. We have yeah. to remember that. We all right. have access. And and I love that you said I I I didn't even really consider that, that we've been sitting on this marketing suite within our current salon software that has all these capabilities. And in this case, simply that we can email our clients and share value with them and encourage them to reserve their experiences for the holidays and invite them into a special gift card event and et cetera. Yeah. And honestly, it took me doing one last post of a hairstyle that is beautiful, but a million hairstyles, as you say, take it, take a day and don't worry about posting a picture and work on setting up a cool email to send out your, I mean, these all take time. So sometimes you have to say, I don't have time for that today. So I'm going to do this today instead. Yeah. It was just, I mean, it was time management. It was like, how many braids do you need to post, Kristen? Let's just work on email today. <laughs> but they're such beautiful braids. 
So if you are an independent stylist running your own business as a solo stylist, Mm -hmm. you too have these capabilities with your booking software, uh, booking app, whatever you want to call it. I do not know a booking app that doesn't offer some sort of email marketing, uh, some sort of gift card, either in within the app itself or a gift card partner. Uh, th- this, this is the basic fundamental stuff um, that I think sometimes we get distracted. Like you said, we're so focused on, I need to keep up with the Joneses, the Kardashians, the whatever the people of the moment are, and, and just keep pushing out this hair and at, at any client of Fashion Squared knows it's not about the fucking hair. Um, and I love that you that that you did make a conscious decision to say, OK, I just need to step away for a minute, think this through and then just fucking do it. Right. And you've done major you you've done two major things. This is that's major. I mean, that's major with 16000 people in your database. That's major. You also just actually launched online booking. Yes. The like scary this, this month. Thing, the, the minute it happened, sweat poured down. Oh, I, I can only imagine. Mm-hmm. What yeah. was your greatest fear? Um, Not having control. Obviously not having control. And what would happen if you lost control? Like what, what? Like what, what did you imagine would happen? Um, I imagined my team being upset with me for allowing this to happen and their books being screwed up and none of it happened. None of it. Like we don't, we don't allow certain services to be booked online because we just don't see, we don't think that our clients are going to get the guidance Mm -hmm. that they need. So we allow services that don't need guidance. A manicure does not need guidance. Mm -hmm. Um, a haircut doesn't need guidance. And we only allow the clients that come here to book online. Once you come here and we establish a relationship, then we give you a password and you can book online. For me, that feels good to start. It's a great start. It's a good start. And the first day it went live and my phone started blowing up with clients making appointments at 5 a.m., I thought, God damn, Nina's right. Huh. You mean the phone blowing up with notifications that people are booking, not no yes. people weren't calling you. Yeah. I just want to make sure yes. that's clear. Yes. Phone blowing my, up is what we're trying to avoid. Not, no, not my phone was blowing up at <laughs> 5 p.m. with people booking oh my God. Like, notifications. Yes. So what's been the feedback so far from because this literally is 16 days. I mean, you launched what on the second or last week you launched. Yes. So it's been last a week. week. It's been a week. Again, why I wanted to re-record this podcast with you. So much has happened since we recorded the first episode. The first time. Right. Um, right. Okay, so in this past week, what what's the feedback been so far? So, in one email, the feedback was like I could sum up the feedback in one email. A guy sent me an email saying. Thank you so much for making this so easy for us. Oh, yep. There you go. <laughs> like, there you go. Someone booked a, a, a haircut in our barber shop, and he sent an email thanking That's for the, uh, you know, the availability. Yeah. 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 Thank you for making so, it easy for me to do business with you. Right. That is a, right. It, that's a workshop right, right. there. Because there are so many things that we can do. Again. Stuff that's available to us online, online, we're talking that make it easier to do business. Right. And so, and, you know, I have a group, uh, a group on Facebook for just my team. Mm -hmm. And when, when I see the benefits and the, you know, the good stuff that happens because of our changes, I screenshot it. So I screenshot the message and said, here we go. This is it. This is this is the this is the result we had hoped for, that clients would find us uh, thinking of them by doing this, not thinking of us. Yeah, I fucking love that, <laughs> Kristen. I'm so proud of you, and thank you so much for being so generous with your experience around and your evolution around the the power of social and digital media. Um, 
just, it's just unreal and simple and you've done it. And, you know, we're never too old. We're never too old to uh, take advantage and to embrace the tools. And, and you have done that. I've watched you do that. And it's just fucking inspiring. And I know that this episode is going to inspire so many others. Where can we find your awesomeness on the internet? Speaking of the internet. Um, so our, the salon is www.lapompanee.com. It's a mouthful, right? It is. And the barbershop is mech, M-E-C, barberspa.com. I love it. And Instagram? What are you all on Instagram? Um, I'm at La Pompane. Great. And the barbershop is at Mech Modern Barbering. I love it. Kristen, thank you so much. Thanks, Nina. We are so grateful I enjoy for it. you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I enjoy badass. The <laughs> and enjoy the learning journey. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, so much for listening. Thank you so much for listening to today's podcast. To learn more about Passion Squared, you can visit us at passionsquared.net. You can find us on the gram and on Facebook at Passion Squared. And be sure to subscribe and share with your friends. We're so grateful. Thank you so much for joining us. Have an awesome day, guys. Love you.